Who is the real loser tonight? Is it the media? Is it the candidates? Or is it the people of Kenya? It's, it's the people all of, of Kenya. Us. Mm. Number one, it is the people of Kenya. Yes. They have lost the opportunity to interrogate their leaders, to hear their leaders' vision and plans. Uh, they have lost an opportunity to be able to weigh their leaders for fitness so that when they vote, they vote wisely, they vote intelligently. And maybe that's the purpose for which these leaders did not show up. Yeah. Because they don't want to be interrogated. They don't want the issues aired. And they don't want to be in the spotlight. So they want to continue governing as if by fiat. Uh, and, and of course, the candidates have also lost out. Let me tell Kalonzo Musioka and William Ruto, none of them will win the 2022 presidential election. They may think this is for today. This is for 2022. We are going to make sure they don't become even candidates in 2022. <laughs> so this is a warning to them. They may help Uru Kenyatta or Iludinga win the 2017 election, but for the two of them, there is absolutely no way that Kenyans will vote for them in 2022. Samir, same question. Who is the loser tonight? Is it the media? Is it the candidates? Or is it the people of Kenya? I think one... <clears throat> In whichever order, the three of them are losers. Kenyans have lost because uh, people have shown a lot of impunity to them. They've refused to give them an, uh, a chance to watch, listen. And Larry, we are told in Africa, Kenya's literacy rate, I think, is we are number two or number three. So Kenyans are really schooled. They've gone to school. They can understand these things and they can deceive what is being said and what is not being said. Number two, the candidates. Uh, while I don't want to be extreme, like my friend Imeguna here, about 2022, but I can assure you, the way Kenyans are going to look at these people from today henceforth, is going to be completely different. And they're also, they're losers. Because at the end of the day, we want to question ourselves. If NASA cannot understand that by Jubilee not coming up, we should take this opportunity to tell the country what we have, mm -hmm. then what is the thinking in NASA? Then Kenyans will look at Jubilee and say, if you cannot come and people are bashing you because of Unga politics, because of water, and you don't want to come and speak about these things in this kind of debate, then what are you thinking about Kenyans? So at the end of the day, the two have already lost. Now mm -hmm. let me come to the media. Larry, this thing looks very expensive. <laughs> right. Extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. And if our political leaders cannot understand that actually this is money you've put in and is going to waste because of impunity they've refused to come, then this is symptomatic of how they govern this country mm -hmm. and how they are going to govern this country. They don't care about wastage of resources. They don't care about wastage of time. They don't care about serious planning. And at the end of the day, these are the people who will still come to us and continue telling us that we vote them on August 8th. So okay. I think all of us have lost. And then lastly on the same, I don't know whether Kenyan politicians understand what is uh, legacy. I don't know. Because if you can miss something like this, like Meguna said, we shall not forget in 2022, we shall not forget in 2027. Okay. Nerima, the Kenyan people, the media, or the candidates, who has lost tonight? I think it's the Kenyan people because what we have here is time wasted and unfortunately time is one thing that you cannot ever pay back it's impossible and so I'd like to reflect how even in our own traffic when our politicians pass they have the security going with them they don't face traffic so it seems like it's disrespectful to the people it seems like wasting our time is something that is normal for them and then for you to send another representative for your position. I have never heard of that before. I mean, even in class eight, I've never sent someone to do my KCPE for me, my KCSE for me. If that's possible, then why are we forcing issues and going to school? Why are we having this platform? Because I feel like it's an opportunity for us to have all candidates interested in leading our country on one platform. Where are we ever going to have that again? It's not going to happen. It's not possible. So I feel like it's unfair to the Kenyan people because we're waiting to hear your voice to see why we need to follow you. Okay. But you didn't show up. Friends, we've got a new tweet alert <laughs> from the State House Senior Director, 
digital strategist, blogger, senior director, <laughs> digital <laughs> innovation, oh, and that's for a communication. Let's just end. <laughs> Oh, Engaging Kenyans in their homes, the markets and places of work is very effective. From Chesongos to Kachapin and every village of Kenya. So I guess oh, that's why they're not coming. a guy who never went to school to say things <laughs> like that. Yeah. Yes, so, <laughs> Larry, if I may come in. Yes, Dr. Alex. Those are Alex. people working at Alex, Alex uh, yes. don't, don't credit that tweet no, by no, no, answering. No, 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 no. no I think, don't answer that yes. tweet. I think the optics of those empty seats in the auditorium is abominable. It is shameful, it is disrespectful to the time and commitment that Kenyans have to a democratic process. Having said that, what we have seen today is a spirited attempt to perpetrate and preserve the culture of okay. euphoria, ethnic mobilization, and hypnotism as a basis for conducting politics in this country. That you do not present yourself with reason and measured discourse to persuade Kenyans to come with you on a platform of ideology and a commitment to drive transformative change. That it is just about going out there, as Miguna said, singing and dancing, twisti twisting your legs and the theatrics. So in that respect, I think Kenyans are losers. This is a very sad night for us today, that our leaders would treat us so shabbily and with, with no respect to the institutions of this country, to the effort of civil society to create a space for them to speak candidly and honestly to the Kenyan public. Okay. I think this will go down in history, as Meguna said, as one day we shall never forget.